Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we have real team rider Brett Barley with us, and we are here with episode one of Under the Glass. So right away you're asking yourself, what is, what is under the glass? Brett, what's on, what is under the glass? Under the Glass is gonna be a series of board reviews that I'm doing with Trip and Real on everything they carry, all different kinds of boards, from short boards to fishes, fun boards, summer boards, whatever. We're gonna ride it all and give you guys the breakdown of what I think is the best and what's like what I like about each different kind of board. The thing that we like about Under the Glass is the uh, is the backstory. You know, uh, Brett was with Superbrand for 10 years, you know, working with Superbrand and, and, you know, having boards shipped to him. And, you know, basically the boxes would come and you'd put the boards together and you go out and do your thing, which is which is awesome. And, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of choices beyond that. And I remember the first day that you were not on Superbrand and you came into the, into the shop and you were in the board loft. There's like 1500 boards everywhere. And you're just like, how do I choose? Yeah. Yeah. It was, well, what was funny was like all of my friends, I always hear them like diving into like dimensions and models and brands and this and that. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I've been wearing the same three models for like forever. And so to come out of that and then be like, Oh, well, I, okay. Now I see what they struggled with, like trying to figure out like what works for me. And so it's been really fun to like have that freedom, be able to choose whatever, try different shapes, try different shapers and uh, dial in what I've been enjoying. Yeah, no, it's been, and it's also, uh, I think all of the people that, that follow your vlog and, and follow your social channels have been, uh, they really tuned in to being able to like following the transition and watching you surf the different boards and you know a lot of positive comments too actually about about your surfing although i mean it's, it's always been there but uh, people noticing a difference like from one board to the next yeah yeah i, I think there there's just something that comes like, there's a benefit that comes with not doing the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. like for me before it was about diving dialing in like specific dimensions like to a to a fault to the point where i was like oh if it isn't like this i won't ride it right and so opening that up has brought like it what feels like a different a new spark to my surfing and apparently that is showing and people have been enjoying you know seeing what i'm on seeing what i think about it and then also telling me what they like watching me on <laughs> yeah exactly so i mean let's take a look at uh at board number one i mean this is the board that you <laughs> rode literally session number one right yeah. as a as a free agent like being able to ride anything that you wanted yep this is the first board and from the very first wave i knew that it was a good board see to me that's been something that you know i'm not super dialed in on you know concave and rocker and this and that i'm just like i can feel it in my hands i hop on a wave and i know whether i like it or not almost instantaneously uh, I can tell whether a board's going to be good if I can figure it out or if I'm going to hop on it and be like, no, this is, this is going to be a struggle, but I'll try. This board, I hopped on it and from the very first time I stood up, it was like, I didn't even have to think about it. It just did what I wanted it to do. And it was a pretty wild feeling going from like, like I said, being so dialed in to like, okay, I'm going to pluck this one off the rack. I have no idea. And, no idea. And it was that amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. For those of you that don't know, I mean, this is a Lost Driver 2.0. I mean, this is the the workhorse of the Lost High Performance like shortboard series. It's in Lost Lightspeed construction, and that is a stringerless EPS blank with epoxy resin and Lost own fiberglass schedule on here. Uh, what Matt and the Lost guys are looking to do on this board is to make a light board that will also last. So they want it to be light you know, very much along the same weights as like a, a competition PU poly, like single glass. They also want the pop, like the spring and the pop out of the turns of a stringerless board. Uh, but they don't want the board to fall apart as quickly as like some of those disposable PU boards. So they came up with light speed and, uh, and this is the board that, you know, Brett, like Brett, like basically went around the entire shop. He said, this is the one I, you know, this is the yeah. one I want to have. And uh, the surprising thing was, is that it was windy. Yeah, so, so it was windy. It was like, I would never in my life think about riding in epoxy in those conditions, but I wanted to try it out. And so I gave it a shot and it kind of continued to be windy. The like few first times that I rode it, it was all windy. And I was really surprised that for an epoxy, how well it would handle in the wind. Even the one day, you know, it was like six to seven foot with some overhead, you know, two foot overhead sets. And I was able to do carves off the top. It was holding. I mean, it would still, you know, you could feel that it was an epoxy and like right, 20 right. mile an hour winds, but it held. And yeah. that was super impressive. Uh, I love it. Springy and poppy, as you were saying, those are like two ways that I've been explaining to people the way it felt. Um, it's just when you load up on the bottom turn or off the top, there's just like a, 
a release, like load up and release that it gives you compared to like a regular poly board. Mm -hmm. And that made it so responsive. So like in my head, as I'm approaching a section or making these like minor adjustments on the wave, it was doing it like so fast. And then as it's doing it, it's like projecting you and giving you speed in a way that like, you know, felt so new to me. And um, it was really exciting. And it's funny because since then I've like been trying other boards and I just keep coming back to this one because it feels just so perfect. No, it's real. I mean, it's really good feedback and you can see it like in the, you know, if you're on the beach that day or in the water, like watching that first session or, you know, watching the video right now, I mean, you can see the, the liveliness of it. And uh, I think, you know, one of the things that comes in your head where you don't think it's going to work in wind is like epoxy. Yeah. Like, so it, as soon as you hear the word epoxy, like everybody gets diverted down this street where they think about that they're going to be chattery and, yeah, yeah. and or like everything else. It needs to be a small wave board or use it, you know, like people use them in pools and stuff nowadays. And I always only wrote in epoxy in like smaller waves or right. really glassy waves. Right. And so it was, it was cool to be able to hop on this see its durability. I mean, there, there was one wave I packed that was like, when I was out on it, it got super windy and it was getting bigger and this, you know, overhead wave came in, was sucking up and I was nervous to go. I'm like, how's this thing gonna handle on the drop and in the wind? And I didn't make it and I'm like, oh, it's broken for sure. Like for sure, stringerless epoxy is broken. And I came up and it was all good. And I was like, okay, this thing is like a beast as well. Yeah, I mean, and if you look at, um the epoxy, right? That's like the one that kind of diverts everybody. Like you say epoxy and they, and they automatically go back to those like sandwich boards. The epoxy, it's just, it's just one component of the board. The epoxy is the resin. And so you have the blank when this board is an EPS blank. It's a stringerless EPS blank. You have fiberglass, which is in all boards, whether it's a PU or a, or a epoxy board. And then you have the resin. And in this board, it has epoxy resin. Uh, but it, there's so many things going on other than just the resin yeah <laughs> you know and so a lot of the pop is coming from the fact that this board will bend further than a stringer board and then spring you know spring out of it um there's also a lot of pop coming from the carbon strip on the bottom the carbon strip on the top and not having it be full length the type of fiberglass that lost is using there's so many things like where you're getting that spring and that pop but it, it's important for everybody out there like just remember epoxy is just the resin it's literally like it's just the liquid that, that hardens, that holds the whole thing together. And, it, and there's a lot of positives, you know, on the epoxy. You know, it's, it is livelier. Uh, it, it can bend further without cracking uh, compared to poly. Um, and so a lot of, there's a lot of pros, I think, that come out of epoxy that people don't realize. They immediately, they think about that, you know, that one board that they surfed a long time yeah, ago yeah. that was a, a sandwich board. And those, those boards, like those epoxy boards, they felt that way not because of the epoxy resin, but it was because of an ultra hard foam that was wrapping the board inside, which was what made it really durable. But it also made it really, you know, yeah, like chatter. Yeah, and I mean, as far as epoxies go, I've, you know, had epoxies over the years, and I've always found them to be way more durable in the sense that, like, those are the kinds of boards that I always save as they get older and use for the shore break waves. Uh huh. They're gonna they get bashed into the bottom, they get rolled up the beach. And I've had less epoxies break and ding. I mean, obviously when you get a ding, it's more crucial to fix right away yeah. compared to like a poly, but yeah. I've had less buckle break and ding than any of my polys and they've, you know, last for years. Yeah. So let's go back uh, to performance on this. And, you know, let's talk about, uh, we talked about the first session. Let's talk about wave range. Like what was the the bottom end that you really liked the board in where it worked like size wise yeah and then also the the top end so honestly i haven't really found a bottom end um i've been riding some other boards in small waves like knee to thigh high knee to waist high and i can ride this just as well mm -hmm. um i would say like the sweet range for me is in the like three to six foot range okay um you know waist stomach high to like shoulder to head high um it's felt really good in that it, I have pushed it above that and caught some overhead waves with it. It obviously isn't made for that. I think that in the three to six foot range, it is my ideal board. Like basically any day that's that size, I want to be on this board. I don't even want to think about riding another board. I just want to ride this. And so there's something about it as far as in that size range, it's perfect for performance surfing, speed, um, drive, 
you know, even on the small waves, it handles, because it's so light and buoyant, it handles through flat spots. And then it handles even once you get pushing into like a head eye wave or a little overhead and it still holds on rail, like, you know, kind of like a Pollywood. Mm -hmm. And it rides, I would say it completely rides different than what I would have expected. Like pulling this out, I was excited to ride it. I had no idea that the driver was their like main performance board. At the time in my head, I really wanted some polyurethane boards. Like I didn't want to get all weird and technical. I wanted something that I knew. And I would say right away, I was just completely put in my place of what, you know, the, I should be looking at when right. it comes to Right, yeah. A no, that's, a, that's, a, that's an important thing to point out. I mean, I remember you looking through the rack and that w the one size that you needed in PU, we didn't have it. Yeah. But we had this one yep. in EPS epoxy and you're like, okay, I'll try this, you know? Because yeah. it was like the perfect dims and the perfect volume and you're like, okay, this is the one I want. Obviously a lot of salt water time on this board, but you also took it to the pool Right in in Waco, you yep. did a trip with Will and Sean Dean and like everybody uh, from the spot yep. frozen yogurt uh, crew, like up in in yeah, uh, yeah. in Nags Head, they were doing like a promo trip there yep. to get a bunch of clips. So, so I, I took this and I took the sub driver as well because I had so many people telling me that the sub driver is so perfect for the pool. I personally found I did like the sub driver more on like the rippable waves, but mm -hmm. when it came to the air section, I liked this board more. Um, I just for me, when I hop on this, I have total control. Mm -hmm. And even though I like the sub driver, I really like the sub driver, you know, in like chest high and under, shoulder high and under. But for me, I have the most control I've had with a surfboard on this. Okay. And what even, even in the pool, even in fresh water, even in small waves. All right, Brett, let's talk about fins. What uh, fins were you riding on this board on the, on the driver 2.0? So I went just straight to my go-to Future Fins, the John John Mediums. I've been riding these for years and I've ridden them in all of my boards. If I get a board that I don't necessarily love right away, then I'll start experimenting more. I do actually want to try some different fins and see if I get like a different feel out of it. But it's one of those things where they just went together so well, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I've been riding the John Johns and they've been absolutely perfect in it. But I do think that trying something else out could, uh, I mean, you know, it's one of those things like maybe I could try something else out and that's even better. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. And what is it like the, you're really good at, at translating the feel of the, of the board. Like what is it oh. about the feel of this thing and like the performance of this thing that you like? I think that I just don't even have to think about it. Okay. Like it's hard to explain, but when I hop up on a wave, I look at the wave and what I want to do and I don't have to think like, oh, I'm gonna need to draw my turnout more. Oh, I'm gonna need to like start this sooner. It is just completely responsive to how I want it to go. And like subconsciously, I'm just making moves and it does it. I don't have to think about it. And it feels perfect as far as, it, there's no lag. There's no, you know, skipping out. There's no, there's no uh, questions as to how it's gonna perform. So right. when I take off on a wave, the only thing that's standing between me and like success is myself. It, it, it's not, it's the not, board. The, it's, not, it's any, not the board. Any part you of cannot the board. use the board as an excuse. <laughs> no, it's a good, I mean, it's a good explanation. And then, you know, last but not least is, you know, who's this board for, you know, obviously there's people on the, on the world tour using it. Um, you know, you're using it and loving it. Like who, like how far down do you think in ability level you can go? I mean, it is your perform high performance standard short board. So, mm -hmm. you know, you do want to have some skill, but I would say that it isn't, it's very forgiving. You know, I, I think there's been a lot of times where I was like wrapping a turn and I would have typically bogged and it just drove straight through. And so I think that, you know, as long as you're like an intermediate and you're dabbling in short boards, right. then like, you know, it's for anybody. It's durable, long lasting and, you know, light, responsive. You're really gonna, you know, feel where uh, your weaknesses are in your surfing, I think but it's also going to help you like ride through those and dial in to and know, be a better surfer. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, Brett. Well, Hey, thank you so much for spending the time yeah. with us and actually everybody out there as well. First episode of under the glass. Uh, we're excited about episode number two, which is going to be the lost sub driver 2.0 also in light speed construction. So stay tuned for that coming out next week. If you have any questions about, the Lost Driver 2.0, either questions about the board, the design, dimensions, volumes, ordering one, 
custom ordering one anything, you can always give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>